home videos have to be legitimate. So fake this fool as good as you can, all right? Okay. Here's your banana peel. You ready? Okay. Action! Jeez, Ralphie, my grandmother could fake a better fool than I. See, Kirk, I don't know about this. What if I break my leg? All the better. Home video hijinks loves that stuff, Ralphie. Last week, they gave $10,000 to this woman who sent in a videotape of her husband getting shot in the stomach by a cannon. That was on America's Most Wanted. What's the difference? It was still funny. Ruffy, let's try that fool again, all right? Okay, and this time, think real. <laughs> there you go, all right. Hey, you got your banana peel? Yeah. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. Action! John is filmed before a studio audience. Wonderful, Mary Beth. Why don't you share it with everybody? Everybody, Mary Beth would like to tell you a little good news. Oh, good. We can do with some good news. Oh. So, Mary Beth, what's the poop? <laughs> well, it's not all that good. You know this airline magazine above the clouds? It's the one that they keep in the seat backs behind the barf bags. Those are barf bags? <laughs> Oh, that's the last time I hyperventilate into one of those. The magazine has interviewed Mary Beth for a job on their writing staff. Now, isn't that something? Oh, Mary! Hey. You're going to be a magazine writer? That's wonderful. Well, not quite. Get this. Before they give me a job, they want to see a sample of my writing. Boy, oh, boy. Excuse me. Did you wear that dress for the interview? and they still want to see if you can write? <laughs> now, that is a tough company. I have some things I wrote in college, but I'm not sure they're good enough. Maybe my ex-husband was right. He said the only thing I should be writing is a shopping list. Reminds me of my third husband. He said he just wanted me to stay home and be his love slave. <laughs> Good men are hard to find. John, yeah. could you take a look at some of my writing? I could really use some guidance. Whoa, Mary Beth, if it's uh, guidance you want, you should come to me. When Tom Clancy was writing his novel, The Hunt for Red October, he called me on the phone. He said, Kirk. Kirk! I suppose this is going to be one of those long, stupid, nonsensical stories that turns out to be a pack of lies. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> this is gonna be a short one. Right. So anyway, Kirk, 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 me. Kirk, later. Please. Mary Beth, I, I would uh, I would I would really love to help you out, but I I um gotta be honest with you, you know, when it comes to giving uh, criticism, I tell it like it is. Sure, Mary Beth's an adult. She's had to deal with criticism before, right, dear? Not that I can remember. <laughs> John, 
I want you to be completely honest about my article. Don't worry about my feelings. Be direct, even brutal if you have to be. Now tell me, what did you think? Well, well let me see how I could, uh, how I can put this. Mary Beth, your article is nicely typed. <laughs> and I love the folder you put it in. Oh, and I was worried. <laughs> Anything else? Uh, okay, Mary Beth, look. Actually, your writing is pretty good. But, uh, well, your article lacks, uh, you know, passion. I think you should write about something you feel very deeply about. Well, I thought I did. Do you really feel very passionate about this topic? High heels, how high is too high? <laughs> yes. Yes, well, uh, what I'm trying to say is, um, I think you should write about something that moves people. But I'm just a beginner. Well, that doesn't matter. One of the most powerful things I ever read was written by a little boy who'd never written anything before in his life. Yeah, his name was Carlos. I worked in his village when I was in the Peace Corps. You were in the Peace Corps, John? Yeah. How adventurous. Oh, that it was. <laughs> My first winter in Guatemala taught me a great lesson. Never build a fire in a grass hut. <laughs> anyway, I was telling you the story that little boy Carlos wrote. Even though he could barely read or write, he wrote a very powerful story. It's very moving. He wrote about this river that ran through his village. Now, the people of the village always believed that the river led to a city of gold. So he wrote about this little boy who took his father's canoe and went down that river. He traveled for days and days without ever seeing a soul. He was weak from exhaustion and hunger, and when he finally came upon a village, it turned out to be his own. The river had run in a circle, and he was home. And the city of gold was his own village. Oh, John. That's a beautiful story. Hmm. And you know what? I think I understand. I have to find my river. Oh, that's very good, Mary Beth. Very good. Yes, and I, I'm sure you will. Thanks, John. I can't tell you how refreshing it is to be around a man who takes me seriously. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, most men just want to take me to bed. <laughs> yes, well, I'm sure they're just trying to find their river. <laughs> You're not like that. I suppose that's one of the charms of an older man. Yes, I guess it is. Oh, John, thank you. I'm going to go right home and take a warm bath and come up with a really great idea for my article. Okay. Oh, and Mary Beth, uh, when you're writing, remember, when the heart speaks, the soul listens. When the heart speaks, the soul listens. There's no end to you, John. <laughs> really, you're you're an adventurer and an educator. Well. And you're a poet. <laughs> Is there anything you don't know about? Yeah, how to say my hut's on fire in Guatemala. <laughs> Night, John. Night. John, I know it's early, but I wanted to catch you before you left for school. Oh. Here. Well, uh, what, what, what's this for? It's for you. Open it. Wow, it's, uh, it's very beautiful. What is it? It's a paperweight in the shape of a heart. Oh. I hope you don't already have one. <laughs> no, not that I can recall. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, why are you giving it to me? Because of what you taught me last week, remember? When the heart speaks, the soul listens. Oh. And because I got the job. You did? Yeah. That is wonderful. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Oh, well, it's all because of you. You're mm -hmm. a fantastic, incredible man. Yeah? Well, you should see me after I've shaved. Oh, they loved my writing sample. I took your advice, and I wrote about something that I truly feel and care about. Something from my heart. You see? Didn't I tell you? Huh? What'd you write about? A young woman who's falling in love with a fantastic, incredible older man. 
A man with a very cute nose. <laughs> Gotta get to work, John. I'll see you tonight at group. Bye. She's just a kid. <laughs> She'll probably be over it by tonight. <laughs> oh, he's kind of cute. She certainly has an eye for noses. Oh, you stop talking crazy. You're old enough to be her... older brother. <laughs> ah, poor kid. You know, you never should have let her see you in your bathrobe. Oh, you jerk, just listen to you. <laughs> a young, beautiful, luscious, 25-year-old girl. And you think she could be interested in you? Yeah. Yeah, that bum bum bum. Hey, Rocky. Guess who just received a letter from home video hijinks in Hollywood? Yes, yes, who? yes! Who? <laughs> Us, my friend. Ooh, ooh, ooh. What does it say? I didn't open it, Ralphie. We're partners. Remember, we agreed to share everything. Wow. Thanks, Kirk. Mm -hmm. You get the excitement of opening the letter, and if we win, I'm the one who wants to fly all the way to California. Well, well, why can't we both go to California? Because they only fly one person for a video. And as we both know, this project is my brainchild. Kirk, you don't have a brain. And if you had a child, it wouldn't have a brain either. Before you start fighting to see who gets on the plane, don't you think you should open the letter yeah, first? All right, oh. open it, Ralphie. <laughs> Dear Mr. Morris, we regret to inform you that your banana peel video was not chosen for our show. Not chosen? <laughs> Sorry, Kirk. Don't worry about it, Ralphie. It was my fault. Videotaping a guy falling down the stairs was in bad taste. I'm gonna try something new next week. Like what? I'm gonna go down the hall, I'm gonna toss a jelly donut into Overeaters Anonymous, I'm gonna watch the flab fly. <laughs> Congratulate me, everybody. You're looking at the newest staff writer for Above the Clouds magazine. Whoa! Whoa. That is wonderful. Oh, yeah, it's so exciting. I've got my own office with a nameplate on the door, a computer, and... A breathtaking view of what makes New York City the greatest city in the world. <laughs> Bloomingdale's! <laughs> call me irresistible, call me irresistible, call me irresistible, call me. Excuse me, do you have the time? Oh, come on, you could do better than that. <laughs> Oh, boy, when it rains, it pours. <laughs> Hi, kids. Hi, John. Uh, Hi, John. Hi, John. Mary Beth's just been telling us the good news about her job. Well, it's all thanks to John. He's very special. Right back at you. <laughs> <laughs> Louise, I think we're out of sugar. Oh, I'll fetch some. Excuse me, Mary Beth, I think this is where I sit. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll move over. <laughs> this week has been the greatest week of my life. And I owe it all to you, my wonderful, caring John. I've never known a man who could make me feel such, such incredible passion. <laughs> Okay.
can I say I do what I can? Well, can you do it better than anyone I've ever known? Do what? <laughs> we don't mean to pry, but do exactly, um, what? <laughs> I finally found the man that makes me soar like an eagle. John? John Lacey? Yes. He's the wind beneath my wings. The wind beneath your wings? Maybe that should be our song. Uh, Mary Beth, that's uh, very sweet, but maybe we should talk about this later. But, John, these are our friends. They're like family. I want them to know. No what? <laughs> we don't want to pry, but do exactly, um... Can I, can I say something? Well, you see, um, when a man reaches my age, he acquires a certain uh, sophistication, a certain degree of maturity, and even, um, may I say, wisdom. These, of course, are the dividends of middle age. Well, John, uh, enjoy it while you can still cut your own meat. Yeah. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is that when you match those inner feelings with that man's rugged... Uh, lived-in looks that females find so appealing. Uh, why, it's inevitable that sooner or later some beautiful younger woman will take that man down the road to passion. Yeah. I've hitched that highway a few times. Anyway, uh, when, a, when this beautiful young, younger woman comes into that man's life, it uh, makes that man feel, well, uh, rejuvenated. Especially when there is a chemistry between these two people. There is a, a marriage of emotions, a marriage of the minds, a marriage. Uh, uh, if y'all excuse me, I'm, I'm feeling a bit flushed. I need to go splash some cold water on my face. Oh, John, what a beautiful marriage proposal. <laughs> talking about marriage? This is crazy. Did anyone hear me propose marriage? No, 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 no. She misunderstood everything I was trying to say. I, I wasn't, I wasn't intending to marry Mary Beth. Oh, so in other words, you were just using her. Or should I say rejuvenating yourself? Oh, come on, Jay. No, uh, look, let, let, let me explain. John, something. before you say anything, let me tell you man to man how I feel about this whole see me escapade. <laughs> At this moment, I am very, very proud of you, John. Oh, just you have to, please. Now, come on, I was not, I was not proposing to her. Look, because I helped her with her writing, she developed a crush on me, and I, I was just trying to tell her how flattered I was. But believe me, nothing, but nothing happened between us. And, uh, nothing ever will. Oh, what a shame. And Kirk was so proud of you. <laughs> well, John, you'd better tell Mary Beth. And do it gently, otherwise you're going to have a broken-hearted young lady on your hands. Oh, God, I hate to do this. I'm really, I'm really not very good at this. Oh, John, it's nothing to it. I do it at least once a week. You just... You just do it. You just let her down real easy. You just let the air out real slow. Don't listen to him, John. He's talking about his inflatable doll. Uh, uh Mary Beth, uh, I, I think we should go. All right, John. Uh, John, it's jolly noisy in the hall. There are moments when people have the need to be alone. Why not use the storage room? Oh. It's very private. Ah, uh, Mary Beth, uh, about what I said out there. I know exactly what you're thinking. When we were at your apartment the other day, I can't describe the feelings I had for you. To keep from 
Attacking you? I had to recite the Gettysburg Address over and over in my head. Yes, well, Mary Beth, you see, uh, the thing... It, the, the Gettysburg Address? Uh-huh. To keep my mind off of how much I wanted you. It's a little trick I learned in high school in the backseat of Billy Hopper's Chevy. Yeah, well, whatever turns you off. Um, John... I'm sorry, but I can't marry you. Mary Beth. I... It's not because I don't care about you, John. You know I do. But you deserve better. You deserve someone who wants to live with you and die with you. Someone who wants to lay in the ground side by side with you. <laughs> if you married me, you'd be waiting in the ground 40, 50 years. How old do you think I am? It's not just that. When you proposed out there, I realized I'm not ready to get married again. Well, thanks to you, I've got a new career, and right now, my work comes first. Yeah. Yeah, of course it does. Mary Beth, I, I, I just want to thank you for making an older man feel so young and so wanted. To be honest, I think the feelings that I have for you are simply the feelings that I have for a very um, special friend. I feel the same way about you. Do you mind if I give you a hug? Just one friend to another? Be my guest. score in seven years. Coming up next, Sam leaps into the high seas for a nautical romance on an all-new Quantum Leap. And Friday night, you'll get all the action you can handle on an all-new Mancuso FBI. And Kaz and Battles fill a double bill of action with back-to-back -back episodes of Hardball. An all-new action-packed Friday night, only on NBC.